I'm Buddy Craig from You Are Comp here with a comp travel interview. I'm, I've been talking about doing this for like two years because I know at some point a You Are Comp customer is going to hit a multi million dollar jackpot and their lives are going to change and they're not going to fly on Southwest Airlines in the C class in the middle seat anymore. They are going to fly private. And so we've got an interview here today with Vault Aviation, CEO and president. We've got Paul and Wes. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having us. So, Tell us about, Wes, why don't you tell us about Vault Aviation? Yeah, so um, uh, Paul and I started this about uh, almost a little over four years ago now, um, basically beginning of 2016. Uh, funny enough, we've actually been best friends going all the way back about 20 years ago. It's about eighth grade. So, um, yeah, I mean, we never really had planned on, on getting into business together, but uh, kind of, you know, the stars aligned timing wise. Uh, he was an attorney and I was working for a, a different uh, aviation company here in Dallas. And uh, we just kind of were unhappy, like, you know, so many other uh, so many other Americans and people with their with their job, and so let's just go for it, you know. And how many times you get the opportunity to start a business with your you know your best friends? So um, yeah, I mean, uh, fast forward to now, and um, I mean we've we've grown um, year over year, um, you know, and we have a blast, you know. It's a private jet charter, you know, on demand. Uh, fly our clients on anything from turboprops to G650s, you know, and everything in between, but. Uh, Full full service, international, domestic, local. Anytime you plane, or any type of plane you want, you know, as soon as you need it, you know, we do last second stuff, stuff months in advance, you know, anything. We really haven't met a, a trip or a need that we can't fulfill yet. But uh, yeah, we're just continuing to grow. We work primarily about two thirds of our client base right now are in the sports world, um, athletes, coaches. Um, and works well for us. It allows us to, uh, um, I guess, bring another passion of ours into the fold, which is sports. So, uh, yeah, we've, it's been a it's been a fun ride so far. And um, yeah, I'm hoping we continue to keep it going. Um, I guess you know, 2020 and beyond. So, uh, it's wonderful. So, how does how's the business work? How do you guys make money by chartering a plane like this? Sure. So uh, basically, what our business model is, uh, we're a, a pure brokerage. So uh, basically, we are reaching out to our uh, network of safety vetted aircraft owners and operators, and then um, we purchase an individual flight, and then we resell it to our end user client. So, you know, we do the work of you know sourcing the aircraft to make sure it meets the needs, you know, the number of passengers, um, you know, depending on where it's going, um, you know, only certain planes can land in certain cities or in certain airports, and then. You know, if there's stuff like, are you going to bring golf clubs, are you bringing pets or skis? Um, you know, there's certain planes that are better for each one of those. So we're using our expertise in the aircraft to select the best one for our client's trip. Um, so then, you know, uh, for any particular trip, say someone wanted to go to Vegas for a weekend, um, you know, they say, hey, uh, we need a, you know, a Friday through Sunday round trip to Vegas for six people. Um, so. We'd go ahead and reach out from anywhere, you know, five, 10 to 20 different aircraft operators. Um, then we'd get this range of prices and we'll identify the best plane to meet our clients' needs. And then, um, you know, we'll negotiate on price and then um, we present it to our client with um, our markup on it. Um, and so that's kind of how we monetize the business. Um, we use our, you know, negotiating skills and our expertise in you know finding the best safest aircraft and then um you know it's a service that you know a lot of our clients are really appreciative of because they you know they trust us uh, they know we're gonna give them a safe airplane that they're gonna have a good time so you know the the small markup we throw in there um you know it's uh you know it's pennies compared to what the entire uh, sure. plane costs but you know we've uh, we've had a really successful track record of just you know being the best in the industry on price uh, just because you know we negotiate a little bit harder than other people's do you know i was a lawyer weston used to work for a nfl agent so uh just kind of in our blood to kind of you know negotiate hard and, and get the best deal so when you say operators you reach out to five or 10 20 different operators mm -hmm. does that mean people that own the planes or those people that manage multiple planes for different owners or what, what's an operator um, both, uh, you know, they're the majority, the vast majority of the p private jets you see, um, you know, friends, celebrities, whomever booking, they're owned by a business or a corporation. Um, and when they're not, you know, the days that they're not using it, 
uh, the owners that is, they basically have a company, uh, aviation company manage it and market it um, and quote it out so that they can make some revenue on those flights to offset you know, their fixed costs like pilots, uh, maintenance expenses, you know, all those things that uh, really add up you know, as an owner. Um, and there are a handful of, uh, of big companies out there as well, big operators that they, they own the fleet outright themselves. Um, so they're just strictly charter planes. Uh, so it's a little bit of mix and both, and there's some pros and cons to to going in either direction. But uh, we really, I mean, we have a we have a mix of of both. Kind of just depends on what kind of plane you want, and that's really where we determine what direction we go versus whether it's own, you know, an, an aircraft that's fully owned by a, a company or whether it's um, you know a uh, a charter aircraft owned by a single individual. So a plane like this, or I, I guess in general, is a plane constantly on the move, I mean, so they don't want their plane just sitting there not making money. Yeah, it actually, it really just depends on, you know, uh, whether it's a, uh, so if it's individually owned by, say, just a charter company, and all they do is charter out the planes, then they want that thing flying, you know, all the time, because then they're making money all the time. Uh, if it's uh, one where it's a managed aircraft, um, so if it's a managed aircraft, anytime we want to book it, um, the management company has to go get approval from the aircraft owner. So sometimes, you know, they'll turn down a trip for, you know, any number of reasons, like they may need the plane or, you know, they, so we've had some people say, we don't like to do flights to Vegas because they think everyone's going to party and destroy their plane. <laughs> or um, we don't want to do a trip that has a dog on it because, you know, it could pee on the airplane, just like all kinds of stuff. Um, so, you know, it really, it really depends and you'll get like the weirdest reasons for people not accepting trips. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's kind of a toss up. Um, between you know which one is better i mean they both have pros and cons the um the managed aircraft tend to be in better shape because they're flown a lot less um but you know you could sometimes get better pricing better availability on the um you know the the owned aircraft so it's um you know there's there's pros and cons to both but um you know we use both all the time and it's a pretty good system for us so generally speaking one of these pro athletes call you up like how much lead time do you have to book a flight? Like walk us through just a typical, like what time you get the call, what what do you do? Are you texting all these operators? Yeah. How, do, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, it, again, it's all over the board on that. Um, you know, there's just so many variables when it, you know, everybody asks us questions and it's like, well, it just depends, you know. Well, give us a yeah. frantic one. What's right. like yeah, in so, the last so, I mean, week or two? Regularly, I mean, we, we really do kind of pride ourselves on being able to handle last minute you know, last minute flight needs. Um, we have guys call us up all the time that are like, hey, I need to get to, you know, I need to jet to get to practice. They either stayed home, you know, to stay with family for an extra night, you know, after a game, and they got to get back to the team facility. They didn't ride back with the team and they got to be there. And literally the cost of the jet, if we can get them there in time, will get them, uh, help them avoid a hefty fine from being late to practice or missing practice. So, I mean, literally, like those instances, how fast can you get me a plane? You know, is what we get a lot. And typically, the, the standard, you know, we try to shoot for two hours, um, you know, on average, sometimes a little more. Sometimes you get lucky and can do it a little, even, even faster. But uh, I mean, that's, that's obviously on the very short end. And then we obviously have clients that, that do, you know, plan stuff out, typical vacations and stuff, weeks, months in advance. But we do handle a lot of last minute stuff. And, and that's really part of how we've grown our business is because we've really prided ourselves on truly being available 24 7. Almost all these companies uh, that we compete against claim to be 24/7, but we've gotten clients a lot because people have called their broker at midnight on a Tuesday and been like, "Hey, you know, someone pick up. I need, you know, I need a flight." And then they end up not giving it, being able to reach them, and they ask a teammate or a friend or whomever, and they get in touch with us, and we, I mean, we answer no matter what time of day it is, you know. So it's difficult, but um, you know that that's. We kind of live by that, you know. Hey, we're going to market us, ourselves this way. We need to, we need to live up to it. But it's really kind of one of the founding or core principles we built our business our, on. Our all-time record is 45 minutes from when we got a phone call to when we got someone airborne because then I needed to go out of Midland, Texas. It was mm -hmm. just very random. And then we started doing our thing, and we got a call from an operator, and they're like, "Hey, we have a plane in Midland right now. The crew is there, a hot standby. So as soon as they can get there, we can take off." So um, sometimes, you know, we've been able to pull off. You know, crazy stuff like that. We've also had like, you know, you know, like the the random 2 a.m. phone calls, or it's just like, you know, it's like, and you know, with the people we work with, it's like, you know, it's like I need to to get back to L.A. by 
five because uh, my Dancing with the Stars shoot starts at like six. So it's like all kinds of random stuff like that. But it's uh, you know, interesting and and yeah. fun and challenging. But you know, it's it's rewarding because you know, a lot of the guys are you know, super appreciative that we're able to actually make that happen for them. So they can live, you know. Uh, a very fun life and you know they know they can count on us to you know have their back whenever they really need it so you get this last minute thing is there like some kind of uber for no, i guess not uber for, like how do you hit all these operators like i got somebody that needs to go now do you are, are you texting these guys or emailing or like how do yeah, you yeah it's um so we have like a software we use where we can kind of send requests and then we also have this like email forum where we basically just send like send one email say this is what we need and then okay. It goes out to every one of the industry that has aircraft available. Um, so, you know, that's how we do it. Then we also do do like the, the texting and the phone calls to certain people, especially if it's like one of those late night things, like you have to wake people up. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's kind of awkward and you have to apologize. Mm -hmm. Like, sorry, I have to wake you up, but we're trying to give you money. So, trying to give you money. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, that's, you know, the, the main way we do it is, you know, through just like, kind of basic email. We know like who to ask and what cities and stuff like that. Just over, you know, once you get the repetition in there, it's just like, you know, someone needs something out of Denver. It's like, we know exactly who to ask immediately. So. So you've had, how long did it take you to become an expert? Cause you mentioned there's a lot of like weird requests on like, oh, that guy hates poodles or whatever. Like, yeah. how do you, how long did it take you to understand what the pros and cons of every plane, what plane will work for different requests? Like how, Tell us about that kind of development for you yeah. guys personally or as a company. Yeah, so I mean, on, I mean, it takes it takes a while. I mean, I was brand new to the industry when I got in it. Neither one of us have an aviation background at all. So I, I mean, I couldn't tell you, a, you know, Gulfstream from you know, um, a little you know single pilot Cessna, you know. Um, so learning all the individual planes and really you know what trips you'd use those for, how many they can see, you know, how fast they can go, how many hours can they go without a fuel stop. And then obviously also all the you know pilot FAA regulations and everything that goes into it. It really, I mean, we do pretty intensive training and I'd say we typically say anywhere from four to six months before people really can really handle you know most trips autonomously. But it's kind of one of those industries where things change, rules change, you know, new types of planes are rolled out where I'm still learning. I'm still, you know, every trip is a little bit different. You know, every client's needs are a little bit different. So we're learning, you know, new things um, on the fly constantly you know I mean I've been in this business since 2012 um, and Paul's been in it like we said since we started this thing in 2016 but we're still I mean we're still kind of refining our craft to this day but on average I'd say with intensive training anywhere from four to six months where you really have any sort of grasp on, on what you're really doing you know so you said you guys are big in the athletic world you got a lot of players a lot of coaches uh, I saw on your website Brady Quinn he's on there mm -hmm. uh, so Tell us, and if you can name names, it's fun. I know obviously there's an industry like in gaming where you can't always name mm -hmm. names, but um, yeah, so tell us how you got, how you, how did you get into that athlete space and how did it grow from there? Yeah, so it was kind of, um, it was just kind of like luck in that, you know, so when we first started back in you know, early 2016, um, we would, I do a lot of like LinkedIn outreach to, you know, people that I could, you know, think could be a prospective client, like a CEO of a company or president of a company. Um, so I do a bunch of, you know, I send probably, I send probably like a hundred LinkedIn, like email requests. And like the one person that responded was Brady Quinn. Um, and we actually, we didn't know him in college, um, cause we went to Notre Dame and he's obviously a Notre Dame star quarterback. Um, but you know, he took the time, he read it, he said, okay, these are Notre Dame guys. And then, um, we started chatting and then he invited us up to his, uh, charity golf tournament in Dublin, Ohio, which is right by Columbus. Um, so we went up there, we did a, uh, a sponsorship of the golf tournament and it was like 42 degrees and pouring rain. And we like stood out there on our little whole sponsorship the entire time. And so I think after that, he was kind of, you know, impressed by us enough to where, um, you know, he's like, all right, well, I got a bunch of people I can connect you with. And then, you know, that kind of really started, like opened up all these doors for us because that led us to two of the biggest sports agencies um, in the world. And um, you just kind of kind of went like that so just like you know it's just having to constantly network and just you know you never know who is gonna open what door for you because you know Brady hasn't even really ever flown with us because he doesn't fly private a lot you know he gets flown by Fox whenever he's traveling for games and stuff um, but you know he's just been such a invaluable asset to us because he's just been you know so good to us and then in turn we've been you know at his charity golf event every single year 
and you know anytime we can help him with something um we do that but you know it was kind of just you know the one guy that answered the linkedin email led to you know all these dominoes starting to fall and then you know here we are we probably fly you know over 50 nfl players we fly you know probably a dozen or more nba players um we're in with you know the biggest agencies um, in football and basketball, uh, like Athletes First and CAA and um, BDA Sports. And, you know, it's just super, um, you know, it's pretty humbling that we get to kind of, you know, work with these people and they trust us and then they, uh, they send us their clients. And, you know, we've had a just a ton of just success growing the business that way by, you know, and it just comes down to doing a good job for them since we get almost all of our new clients are strict referrals. We don't do and the advertising. Um, so it's just kind of a, you know, you take care of a guy and they're gonna recommend you to their friend or their teammate, or if you take care of a agents, you know, client, they're gonna tell the other agents in the company, oh, use, use Paul and Wes, um, you know, they took great care of us. Um, so this is kind of how we grew it and expanded into it. And, you know, we never really intended to be, um, you know, athlete centered with our, our business, but, you know, it just kind of happened. And so, um, you know, we, we love it. It lets us stay kind of sports adjacent since we're both huge sports fans. And um, yeah, I mean, just getting to meet just some of the the guys, getting to see the other side of them that other people don't see. You know, um, we never talk about sports with them. So all they want to talk about is, you know, their families. And then, you know, we form these great friendships with them and they care about us. And it's just, you know, uh, something I never thought would happen, you know, this quickly. Um, but it's, you know, just incredibly, uh, you know, humbling and gratifying. Yeah. So have you ever, so I know we talked before off camera that you like to go to Vegas, you guys both mm -hmm. bet on sports once in a while or sports fans. Have you ever seen an athlete get on the plane? You're like, man, that guy's looking, he's ready for this game. I'm putting some money on that. <laughs> Uh, or vice versa, he's walking with the lip. Like, you guys supposed to play on stuff? Yeah, and we definitely have had a couple instances, I guess, of like knowing things, you know, before the public does. Just a guy hits us up and, you know, he's like, hey, I need to go. And I'm like, wait, but you have a game, you know, tomorrow or tonight or whatever. And, you know, but typically, I mean. Yeah, we can tell that they're checked out sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, we may get a tip every once in a while, but we really don't share anything about our clients to anybody, of course, but we really don't. I rarely if ever would gamble on anything yeah, because of that but gambling in texas so yeah, yeah. there you go what are we gonna do? Yep. so so yeah i mean rarely rarely ever turn into gambling but it's always kind of interesting to know something and then see it maybe on sports center a couple hours later you know or yep. the next morning or whatever so that's one of the fun things like a lot of the times we'll we'll set up a flight and then like we'll know it's like you know before adam Schefter reports on espn we're like oh yeah i know that guy's flying because he has to go sign his contract you know mm -hmm. just stuff oh, like that awesome. it's like fun you know just for for being him to know and you know but it's like you know we never tell anyone but it's just like man if, uh, we could have scooped Schefter so <laughs> fun stuff like that that's cool and so uh COVID has obviously affected pro sports and so a lot of your clients how has it affected your business overall um yeah I'll, I'll say you know there was that time basically from late March through April where you know, we were busier than most most people, but it, it slowed down for everybody um, across the industry. I think the industry was down 77% this April compared to April of 2019. And I mean, that was ma mostly due to literally, you know, the strictest lockdowns that we've seen were, were in place during that month. You know, people were ordered to stay at home essentially in almost every state. But, um, you know, we still stayed, we still stayed way, way busier. We we're blessed to stay busier than the industry average, but, uh, now, a couple months later, when states started to reopen, actually went from pretty dead to really, really crazy busy. So you really had to be prepared and, and kind of shift your focus and, and how you were going about doing the job because planes were rarely available. If you got a, if you got a, a quote for, you know, uh, a trip in a couple of days, you know, you had about an hour to close on that or else somebody else was going to book it. And what we saw was a lot of, you know, people that had never flown private that had previously, say, flown first class exclusively. But you know, had the money, um, was maybe more of a stretch. They weren't ready to do it yet. They kind of forced their hand a little bit as they felt like, well, I really don't feel comfortable flying commercial yet. Um, even though they're running, you know, that doesn't seem as safe to me. So we saw a whole bunch of people, you know, doing their, taking their first private flights. Uh, so we served a lot of, a lot of new, new client referrals, um, first time flyers. So it's just a, it was kind of a total shift for us. We some something we hadn't seen in quite a while, but uh, it went from dead to crazy busy really fast. Nice, congratulations on that.
So right here, we got a citation 10 behind us. Now, again, we're talking about people that hit that jackpot. We're doing a service to them. So if they want to fly this, we're, in, we're filming this from Dallas, Texas. They want to fly this to, let's say, Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. What does something like that cost them? Yeah, so like something like a, like a round trip on, this is a Citation 10 super midsize jet, um, seats eight passengers. Uh, I mean, for a Friday through Sunday round trip, and a nice clean round trip, three days. Um, yeah, a plane like this is going to be like somewhere in the $25,000 to $30,000 range. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a nice, it's a big airplane. Um, you could get something smaller like a like a light jet, like a Hawker 400 or a mid-sized jet like a like a Lear 60. You know, those are going to be lower down on the price scale. You're going to be looking like $20,000 range, $25,000 range. Um, then, you know, you get the bigger aircraft, you're looking in that $30,000 range. Um, we also do a lot of one-ways. So that's like kind of one of the places we really excel is that, say, someone is just flying. Um, say there's a plane on the West Coast, maybe California-based. And it's just going to be dropping someone off in Dallas, and then it's going to be flying empty back to, to LA or that the West Coast area. So, um, you know, we can track those and identify them. And you know, instead of paying you know, twenty thousand dollars for a one-way flight to Vegas, we can give it to you for ten or twelve grand. Um, so that's kind of one of the uh, main benefits that we we can offer to our clients. You know, we have a lot of people that fly private one way, fly commercial the other way, um, but you know, it's a uh, uh, there's and there's also the bigger aircraft, you know, like the Gulfstream G4 heavy cabin jet kind of area. That's you know, in your thirty to thirty-five, forty thousand dollar range. But um, I mean, we even do a lot of trips, like uh, like especially with our athlete clients. Like after the season, a bunch of guys will want to take a trip to Vegas together, and you know, the plane may cost you know forty grand or forty-five grand, but it's you know ten guys splitting it up. So you know, football players they can you know. Forty-five hundred dollars is reasonable for like a round trip, you know, and it's a great experience with the guys. Like one kickoff return. Yeah, sure. exactly. So, um, but yeah, no, it's a, uh, um, you know, there's a there's a big range. So you know, if it's just you know a small group, there's a lower price. If it's your big group, bigger price for a bigger plane. And so, if uh, let's say it's so three day, they rent the same plane a week. Do you generally say like, all right, let's take one plane out, and we'll just find a different plane to come back? Yeah, if it just really kind of depends on these trips, uh, how long they're staying. You know, if, if it's if you're going to Vegas and you're staying for three days, it's going to typically you come from Dallas, it's going to be the same plane. So this plane that's based here in Dallas would take you there. It'd stay there on the ground for a couple of days and take you back. You know, if you start if you're talking, hey, I'm, I'm going to be staying in Vegas for, you know, 10 to 14 days. Um, you know, you're, you're absolutely going to be looking at a situation where we're trying to match up two one ways. So the plane that takes you out there is almost assuredly not going to be the same jet that, that brings you back home. So it really is, it really does depend, uh, you know, the length of stay for all these trips, whether it's going to be kind of that, what we call a clean round trip, same plane out, same plane out, same plane back, or it's going to be, even though it's a round trip in their eyes, we're viewing it as two one ways. Yeah. And it's a little bit, uh, it's a little counterintuitive. because when you think, if you think you're flying commercial, you're thinking like, even if you're going for two weeks, it's a round trip in your head. Um, but you know, so what happens is like, say you took a plane out there and you're going to stay a week. Um, like the operators would charge for the plane to stay on the ground for that amount of time. So it's like, if you're paying, like you have to pay maybe two hours of flight time per day that it sits. Um, so it actually makes more financial sense to not have it stay there and to do this two one ways. Cause the fees to have it just sit there for a week are going to be more than flying it away and getting a new plane back. So we've been talking about outside the plane, about getting places. I want to see the inside of the plane. I want to learn about what kind of parties we can have on board on our way to Vegas. So should we move inside? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So we are on board a, what's the name of this plane? Citation 10. Citation 10. Beautiful plane. So for something like this, how many people can fly together on a Citation 10? It's eight. Um, you know, that's just, this one's pretty easy to tell. It's just got the eight individual seats. Some of the, you know, number of planes have a, a couch or divan. Um, it's hard to tell sometimes just by a quick glance, whether it's two people can sit on those, you know, three, four kind of depends on model. Um, you know, the bigger planes, the owners can also configure them like a G4 can sit, can see anywhere from like 10 or 11 people all the way up to 18 in some instances, depending on how he, how he outfits, how he wants to outfit his plane. So. Got it. So I've got eight buddies. We're going to Lake Tahoe or the Bahamas or something. So how, 
I want to, I'm, I'm calling Vault Aviation. I say, hey, we're going, we're going to have a guy's trip. We're going to have a lot of fun. How do I get the booze and the food? And like, how does that come on here? Do you guys take care of that or what, what happens? Yeah, so um, we actually uh, try to accommodate any request that we can. Um, usually it's pretty basic. Um, every plane is going to come with what they call a standard stock, which is going to be just, you know, some beer, some mini bottles of liquor, some snacks. Um, but then, you know, sometimes people want, you know, big, you know, sandwich platters, or some people even want like full meals, like, like steak and, you know, lobster. And so there's different ways we get it done. Um, there's what we call private jet catering companies. And, you know, they do these big, beautiful spreads, um, but they're also really expensive. Um, so we'll try to do stuff like, you know, uh, we'll get DoorDash or Grubhub or Uber Eats to drop something at the airport. Or, um, you know, we've even had to go, like, sometimes people want crazy stuff that even they don't deliver. So we'll actually get car service to, like, go just pick up, like, you know, something from Ruth's Chris Steakhouse or, you know, something like that. So, um, you know, we'll do uh, we'll do whatever we can to get what our client wants on there. And in terms of the booze, you know, they tell us what they want and, you know, we'll, you know, get a, a case of Patron or, you know, uh, whatever they want. Um, so uh, a lot of times they actually bring the, the liquor themselves because they want to make sure that part isn't, you know, messed <laughs> the up important at all. Stuff's taken care yeah, so that's definitely the important part. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, we've never had a request. I don't think we've ever been able to, to meet. And, you know, we have all, you know, once we start, once we realize, you know, okay, we can get this car service company to do it now. We can, we can get them anything now. So, uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, so, all right, every like music video I've seen that takes place in a private jet, there's people dancing, there's, you know, champagne being mm -hmm. sprayed. Like, I usually, I, I assume that's not allowed, but what, like, what are some of the boundaries you have to set with customers about like, hey, this is cool, but don't do this. Yeah, I mean, you can have a, I mean, you can have a pretty good time on here. And, and I think a lot of it really kind of depends on the crew you're flying with. I mean, some of them have a higher threshold and, and I guess, uh, what they're willing to let go and what they're willing, you know, to, I guess, try to enforce, uh, what rules are trying to enforce. It also depends on, does the company own the jet? Is it owned by an owner? You know, certain owners have rules, no red wine on my plane, uh, because red wine gets on the carpet. It's really, really difficult and expensive to get out, you know? And, and usually, I mean, they let people have a pretty good time. If there is a cleaning fee or if there's stains or spills, you know, food, whatever they'll charge, you know, we'll get charged a cleaning fee, which obviously, you know, we'll pass along to the client if we have to. Um, but, all in all, I mean, as long as you're not outwardly distracting the crew or, you know, like being ridiculously loud and just trashing the plane, you know, basically being kind of almost disrespectful, you, I mean, you're allowed to have a pretty good time up here. There's some planes that are even outfitted with like legit stereo speakers to where you can like, you know, you can play your iPod and, and um, I mean, it's, it's like a full blown concert, you know, up here in the sky. So uh, we've seen a little bit of everything. Uh, you think of any other, do you, Oh man, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's actually so. I mean, a lot of the guys are just like usually they're flying with their family or they're tired or you know, so there's not too much crazy stuff. But you no, know, every now and again, um, you know, there's I mean, certain planes can even change these like lighting, this lighting to like neon red mm -hmm. and blue, and it kind of feel like a club in here. But um, you know, there's there's very little, you know. I mean, if you're respectful, you can pretty much you know do anything. We actually get some awkward questions sometimes about <laughs> like wondering, you know, what can they do? Like, you know, with their significant other or something <laughs> like that. And then it's like, we're having to be like, uh, okay, how do we, uh, how do we tell them what they can and can't do? But, um, you know, other than that, I mean, I mean, the craziest thing we had happen probably was a, uh, like a bachelorette party. Like, you know, you, you wouldn't think like that would get too crazy, but that was like the, like the amount of damage done to the airplane was, you know, Bathroom door was broken off the hinges. Toilet overflowed. Uh, we had a bunch pay, of issues. Yeah, we had to pay like five thousand dollars to repair that. But you know, we ate that cost because that's what we do for our clients. Mm -hmm. But um, there's always we don't want to encourage that behavior. Yeah, no, I mean that's like the yeah, extreme that we don't yeah. uh, necessarily want. One time again. thing. But um, is that a obviously we're not going to name names? But is that some a household name like with? No, it was just that's the thing. It's like of all the household names, like we fly and like you know you think certain you know football players or basketball players like would you know be partying. It's like nope, it was just a group of ladies going for a fun weekend. Um, but you know, hey, you never know. Now, our so flight records because I've heard, I mean, I heard the Epstein case and all that. This guy was on the flight. Like, is that public? Like, does I don't know. Like, 
do you does everybody that gets on the plane have to be reported and does like does it is that public knowledge or how does how does all that work yeah so um really uh so in terms of like security for private jets there's not your typical like you're not going through a body scanner no one's searching your bags um all we have to do is provide the uh passengers names for the pilot manifest and then they cross-reference the tsa no fly list um so there is a record of it um so you know and it's you know it it's run through the TSA. So there is like a record of it, um, in that sense. Um, but you know, uh, in terms of, you know, yeah, I mean, so it's there, it's not, it's not publicly available. Like the only way you could get that is via some sort of a lawsuit, a subpoena. Um, yeah, subpoena. Um, so, you know, we keep, you know, everything, you know, very private, um, nothing would ever kind of, you know, uh, get out to anyone. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, there is an official record just since it has, you know, the FAA is involved, TSA is involved. So, I guess, yeah, so you'd have to check ID of the people yep. coming in. I can't just say, yeah, I'm Ron Mexico. Yeah, well, <laughs> some people may do that. But, yeah, yeah, generally that's basically it. Like, they'll say we – so we tell the operator who's going to be on the manifest. Um, so then, you know, they'll check. I was like, okay, Paul from Vault told me, you know, XYZ is going to be on there. And they check the IDs and matches. Then, you know, they're good to go. Um, and especially for international stuff with passports and customs – uh that creates another record but um you know it's you know that's all private on our end unless you know something unless the government comes knocking on our door it's not uh, getting out to anyone sure huh. and so the uh you mentioned a 45 minute turnaround because we we deal with a lot of cruise lines so we know mm -hmm. like hey sorry the manifest went out already and with a big cruise ship with you know, I don't know the big ones are seven eight thousand passengers they generally have to send it out i think the day before and the night before mm -hmm. so like we can't do like 45 minutes yeah get on the so what with uh international air travel what's the general like how much time do you need to give the manifest uh, yeah it, it really totally depends on um which country you're going into um you know and what time of day it is right so if you're you know if it, you're trying to go into canada right somewhere we have really good relations it's a direct border state with the u.s I mean, we've, I've added people literally last minute, you know, 10 minutes on the way to the airport, get the passport copies, you know, photos over to, you know, the operator we're working with to file with customs. Um, you know, other countries can be a little bit more difficult. Not every country has customs that's operating, you know, after say six, eight, six, seven, eight PM. Um, you know, some just don't have very much manpower to be able to turn it around uh, very quickly, even if they do. Some weekends are, are not, you know, staffed too heavily. So it really does kind of depend. I mean, the typical tourist destinations are obviously usually easier than, you know, some of the more remote countries or, you know, I guess countries you wouldn't assume people may be going into um, to vacation on or anything. So, uh, and obviously, you know, there's politically, there's political, I guess, politically restricted um, areas in the States that we can go into, but we need a lot of time and clearance to, to get those permits uh, filed. So it's like, yeah, we can do that, but like, we're going to need you know, a couple weeks probably to, to get this 100% cleared by all parties, so. Got it. So we talked earlier about the charter model, which mm -hmm. is most kind of two one ways, or it could be round trip. And then of course some people just buy the plane. Now you guys have an option that's kind of a hybrid, right? Where you're invest a little bit upfront and get a bigger discount. Tell us about the, the program, it's Max Card, is that right? Yeah, yeah. And I'll say just a, a couple of quick words and I'll let Paul kind of add his two cents, but um, Max Jet Card, we kind of, look to create what can we create membership wise some people come from other companies where they they like having a jet card they like having some sort of program um you know in place and so what ours is it's fixed rates but it's really flexible so it's fixed rates for each you know all four major cabin classes light jet mid-sized jet super mid-sized jet and heavy jet and so we have fixed hourly rates for those and the way we look at it though rather than just automatically okay if they want a mid-sized jet for this trip out to vegas like we've been talking about you know, okay, we have this rate, this fixed price set for it. What's the flight time? Six hours round trip. We're going to multiply by the rate and that's your price. So instead we call it the max jet card because those rates dictate the maximum that we will get, we can charge you for that. So it's more or less like a price ceiling um, in effect, you know? So sometimes if it's a really busy time of year, the holidays or whatnot, um, you know, it can be really difficult on availability without availability. Sometimes it's hard to get good pricing. It's hard to negotiate you know, create that competition. So, you know, it's nice to know sometimes, okay, this is the max I can pay for this, you know, like I'm okay with that price. So 
anything less than that's a bonus. Whereas, you know, if you're just only on on-demand without the program, you're kind of at the mercy of, of whatever we're able to find. So there are times in those instances where if you eat some, you know, we eat whatever the difference is just to, you know, obviously honor those those fixed rates. So um, that's that's kind of the core principle, but that there's kind of a lot of guarantees and other things that go mm -hmm. into it. Yeah, I mean, uh, so one of the, or some of the biggest benefits that uh, we found our clients really like uh, is that, you know, they put a, uh, say they put a $100,000 deposit on file. Um, so that's just, that's not a membership fee. That is strictly used for the charter flights they do. So it's just debited from that amount. Um, and, you know, for whatever reason, at any time, if they wanted their balance refunded, it's fully refundable. Um, luckily, that's never happened yet since everyone seems to like the service. But, you know, people like that, that, you know, we don't, their money isn't being kind of held hostage. Um, and then, you know, the money never expires. There's a lot of companies where you buy a specific number of hours. And if you don't use those hours, they're done at the end of the year. So mm -hmm. you lose out on the amount of money you spent to buy those hours or they tell you you can roll them over to the next year, but you have to pay this, you know, increased premium fee. Um, so, you know, not having a membership fee um, is, you know, one of the big things. There's not really a capital outlay up front because, you know, you can get it back at any time. Um, so, you know, those are some pretty, um, you know, uh, key factors that clients really like. And um, yeah, I mean, in terms of just like the, the way the program works, it's like, you know, uh, say, you know, the jet car price for a big trip would be $100,000. If we can just source a great deal and give it to you for $80,000, we're going to give it to you for $80,000. You know, it's fair to us. It's more than fair to you. Um, so, you know, that's just kind of the, uh, the way we do it. And people ask like, why, why wouldn't you just, you know, take that extra $20,000 just because, you know, it's, we're so referral based that you, we take care of people and then, you know, it's more profitable for us to not charge that extra $20,000 and have that client refer us one or two friends that want to become jet card members. Um, so it's just co this constant cycle of, you know, we're being fair to people and they appreciate that and they show their appreciation by, you know, putting us together with their other friends that could do it. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of our basic is, I mean, our basic philosophy is we're always going to provide you a safe airplane at a fair price um, because uh, some people want to, you know, give you the cheapest option and they're just interested in getting you booked. But, you know, we've kind of figured out, um, you know, over time and, you know, it's intuitive. It's cheap is not good when you're talking about an airplane, when it's something that's, you know, flying in the sky. Um, you know, cheap usually means old. It could mean, you know, maintenance isn't done. Um, so, you know, uh, cheap just isn't something that we do. Um, so it's, you know, we're about fair pricing, safe airplanes, great service. And, um, yeah. And flexibility, which I think, you know, like this, this model that, you know, Paul and I came up with really is, you know, there really isn't anything else out there like it because most other programs too, you're tied into one type of jet or one size. Um, well, that may make sense for, you know, your typical trips, but if you have a only, you know, your normal trip is 10 people, uh, you know, international, you need a big Gulfstream, you know, 550. But uh, if you have other trips, you know, smaller business trips, a quick Dallas to Houston hop, you know, like that, that's a total waste of money um, and resources to take a G, you know, any heavy cabin jet for that. So instead, we'll drop you down to, you know, you can just pay for a light jet, you know, and so there's just very little risk with it. There's a lot of flexibility. Uh, and you don't really find that so much with the, the membership programs. It's usually really expensive you know, you're taking a risk in that if I don't like it, I'm, I'm on the hook until my, you know, I use all my hours, my funds. So we, we try to create something that the exact opposite of that, but still offers like the usual membership benefits. Yeah. And, um, which one more thing about just, just these jet car programs in general, um, the way that we run ours with it being, you know, fully refundable, a lot of jet car programs, if you actually read through the fine print, it says like the second you give them your chunk of money, um, not only is it not refundable, but as soon as they get it, they cle they, they claim it's um, already earned. So say, you know, something happens, say the company goes out of business, like they don't have to give you the money back. There's actually a big bankruptcy case uh, based out of here of Dallas that just happened where, you know, something like uh, a company had like $50 million of client funds that were supposed to be on file. Mm -hmm. And then they filed a bankruptcy and they had none of it. Um, so it's like, where's $50 million go? But, you know, they're going to be able to rely back on and say, well, the contract said as soon as you give us the money, mm -hmm. it's not refundable and it's deemed to earn. So um, that's why we kind of just totally went away from that model. 
um, you know, so we're pretty, you know, transparent, you know, and just explaining things. Um, there's a lot, there's a lack of transparency in this industry. Um, so that's just kind of one of the things kind of we offer, we shoot it straight with people, you know, if for whatever reason, our service is not for them, you know, we'll say, you know, maybe someone else could, you know, take care of you better or like your needs are so specific that maybe it does make sense for you to go with a, a net jets or someone else. But, um, you know, in general, we're going to be able to handle, um, almost anyone's needs, um, for probably the best price and, you know, definitely the best service. Well, that's outstanding. I mean, is there, is there anything I forgot to ask you guys? Any good? Uh... Oh, yeah, you kind of, kind of ran the gamut there. I think, uh, I think we, you know, touched on pretty much everything from the fun stuff to the serious stuff, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's been a blast. Like I said, I mean, Paul said, I mean, transparency, low prices, but you know, you're getting something safe. You know, you're going to get something nice. You're going to enjoy. Um, and I think that's, you know, we haven't gone wrong uh, building our business on those principles yet. So I think we'll, we'll probably stick to it. Nice. Yeah. And uh, I guess just maybe the last uh, thing I'd say is just something that's super important to us is giving back um, to, you know, the community and to our clients. So Anytime we get a, a, an athlete client that starts flying with us, we always make the pledge that we'll get involved in your foundation. And we do a lot of, you know, foundation work, foundation events, golf tournaments, dinners. Um, so, I mean, over the past, you know, four and a half years, we've probably donated several hundred thousand dollars um, to, you know, different charitable events for our clients. And, you know, it's great for us. It's great for them. You know, we get to go to these events and meet, you know, teammates or like agents and other people. So... Um, you know, rather than spend money on traditional marketing, we've gone down this route where we build these, you know, uh, we, we think it's like we actually consider us to be partners with a lot of these guys because, you know, um, they consume our service and, you know, we, t you know, we participate in their, in their foundation, things that are important to them. So we just, you know, really enjoyed getting to go and we get to do some really cool stuff that like other, you know, you never think you do just, you know, like one weekend we're you know, having dinner with this very famous NFL player. And then, you know, then we're out fishing, and, you know, Big Cedar Lodge, and, you know, in Branson, Missouri. So there's all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so we found, you know, just being dedicated to that and, you know, keeping our, our promise that, you know, we will, one, sponsor the event, and two, we will come participate in it, even if it's, you know, way out of our element. Like, I'd never fished before in my entire life, but... I wasn't going to turn down the chance to go fishing with a bunch of our friends. So it's, uh, it's been really rewarding to do that and just seeing the kind of making a little bit of an impact that way. And just, right. uh, good for you guys. That's great. You're doing business, doing, doing good, mm -hmm. helping a lot of people and bring them there safely. So, right. so if they hit the jackpot and your comp customer hits the jackpot or goes on that magical craps run, call vault aviation. They'll take care of you. Wes. Thanks man. Appreciate thank you. It. Thanks so much. Paul, appreciate, appreciate it, sir. It, sir. Thank you. All right.